We've already taken a look at this Ugreen system, their six bay hard drive unit that has two uh, M.2 slots for cache or SSD volume and the reaction to this guy has been really, really strong. Yeah, it's it's incredibly well equipped. So we're generally- The hardware is pretty amazing. Yeah, I mean, they do a fantastic job of their build and design. It has a uh, spring plunger for popping the uh, cover off the M.2 bay area and also oh, the RAM area. Right. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of attention to detail. Their software looks pretty nice. There's uh, Their app store is growing. I mean, they brought in Docker support mid th uh, midway through our review. Right. There's a lot of cool features that they bring onto this, and it has the performance level that you're not really used to seeing in this price segment. You're well, I mean, having two 10 gig ports on this one certainly helps with the performance, right? Well, yeah, and you have like DDR5. We're still looking at models that are brand new with DDR4. We're seeing some platforms leverage AMD CPUs that are years and years. Oh, absolutely, years like, and years oh, old. Yeah, so it's it just depends on the market, but right now, I mean, they start from a clean slate and they have the latest hardware uh, that's supported it now. So what if you took all of this hardware and then squished it down into a miniature SSD NAS? It'd be a very fun uh, home lab box. <laughs> or, or a small business or portable data storage or, or... an apartment where you don't want to hear the noise of hard drives. Right, so we've got the DXP 480T Plus, which is their 42280 uh, M.2 SSD system and actually has a fifth SSD that comes in it for boot, which yeah. just like this one, a dedicated boot drive, which is pretty cool. Yeah, and there are some differences. So, I mean, you have a trade-off on size where uh, you go from two 10 gig ports to one 10 gig port. But you get Wi-Fi on this, yes. which is pretty neat. And when you talk about the simplicity of what a NAS can be, especially if you're moving this thing around, if it's traveling with you, if it's going on set or, you know, in your car with you. I mean, there's a number of reasons why you would want that. Wi-Fi makes it super simple. No switch to really have to worry about. Well, yeah, and you mentioned going on set. These guys offer uh, Thunderbolt 4 support and allowing right. the uh, systems to ingest data incredibly fast. I think this guy still has two Thunderbolt 4 ports on it too, which is uh, pretty neat in yeah. something this size. Uh, so we've got this, we've got, what do we have for the SSDs? They sent us uh, Samsung 980 Pros, one terabyte. So. Four terabytes of capacity, raw, but uh, overall, I mean, this will give us a fantastic idea of the overall performance potential of this thing can offer. All right, and uh, this is funny because in the first video for this guy, I spent a lot of time or uh, enjoy in discussing the packaging. And again, they've done a, a really nice job putting this together. It if opens could... up like a takeout box. I mean, I that's pretty cool. Oh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's got uh, spicy chicken inside or something like that. Yes. Here, you can... Uh, Unwrap that bad boy. Let's see what else is inside here. But again, the packaging's really nice. Everything's labeled. That's got a nice plastic wrap on it. Feels uh, very high class in the design. It looks like a Mac Mini. I mean, it feels really nice. Has kind of that same type of layout. And overall, I mean, nice metal body, plastic cover on the bottom. Uh, but overall, I mean, it's a pretty slick build. All right, so we've got... Uh, Heat sinks for the M.2s. Well, thermal pads, sir, not heat sinks. Thermal pads to help shed the heat of the... Yes. It came with another little tiny screwdriver. And then uh, we've got a little power brick here, and this should be the wall plug. Oh, no, that's the Ethernet. Where's the... Oh, it's a, got a little collapsible. It's for travel friendliness. It is pretty travel friendly. Well, I mean, you could throw that in your backpack if you wanted to, no problem. This yes. is probably... That's lighter than the notebook that you're going to carry anyway, and even with the weight of the four SSDs. Well, yeah, and you might say, well, why do you want to leverage something like this versus an external drive? A NAS does offer some benefits of, um, well, multi-user access. Unless you go to a multi-drive external attached uh, storage device, you're not going to have RAID. So, I mean, this offers some benefits you're not going to find with just an external SSD. Well, when you look at most of those uh, high-end, like, media and entertainment, RAID SSD products, those are very expensive, yes. or can be. This is uh, a lot more affordable. And interestingly, I don't know that we covered this in the hard drive version, but it ships with a manual, a physical manual, which is a bit of a, uh, a relic of the past, but is nice to have for someone setting one of these up the first time, especially. Well, yeah. There are some benefits. So the other one that we had, the er, this one, um, Seeing the manual, it describes like how to take off the cover, what screws to remove. I mean, there there are some benefits there. But overall, right. I mean, this is a pretty slick system. 
All right, so look at the hardware around the, the front. So it's got a bottom panel. Where do you want to start here? Let's go. Let's see, on the front we have... Power um, button. Power button, and I'm assuming there might be some lights that uh, indicate uh, status. On the bottom, uh, we see uh, two fan uh, intakes uh, and a large cover. I'm assuming it's going to be where the uh, SSDs and RAM go. Well, we'll see shortly. And then on the back, we have a power reset button, the two Thunderbolt 4 ports, USB HDMI, Headset connection. Oh, huh. And then a uh, Your 10 gig port. port. Headset's an interesting addition that we don't have on this one. Man, it has been a while. We've uh, There's another vendor that loves, uh, they had karaoke access to some of theirs. <laughs> All right, so we've got that. So Kevin's going to use the included screwdriver and get at this. So it looks like two screws. It's got a little lip. And a screwdriver might not seem like much because, I mean, like, if you have one of these, you probably have a screwdriver uh, in your house. But what you if you're deploying? Yeah, if you're deploying this thing for the first time, you get your drives. You have all the needed parts in that box to get up and running. All right. Before you keep going, so this came off this way. This has got a little contact yeah, sensor so there. The fans are part of uh, this, and actually, so this is the heatsink. Yeah. And I kind of want to take this guy open. So. Um, you have fans in the bottom. It's able to uh, draw in air. Well, it's either drawing in air or expelling it there, but right. uh, it's a nice, well, it feels really cold, but it's just a heat sink underneath this. Well, this is uh, even rounded right here. This is kind of interesting in the design. And of course, like these are bays are, are labeled. This is uh, labeled to one, two, three, four uh, for your SSDs. Well, yeah, if that was a hard edge, you'd just be kind of, you'd have a big air disturbance. Right. It disturbance the force. Well, but here's the point. I mean, we're talking about a little flash NAS that, again, the hardware design, they've thought through There's really quite thoroughly. There's a lot of attention detail. Yeah. And if we've learned anything from the Ugreen products, not just these, but the power stations we've looked at in the past, you know, they're, they're also well known for their phone accessories and all that yeah. sort of thing. The design has always been a key uh, element to uh, what they're all about. All right, so I grabbed another screwdriver. There's smaller screws up top. These are... Uh, this, the... part, this part's not designed to be taken apart by customers, but Kevin no, this... sees a screw and can leave no screw unturned. Yeah, so I just want to see what's underneath this, but it's it kind of goes towards the uh, cool design that they have. We're not going to take it completely open. It's held in uh, place currently with a piece of tape. I don't really have a break the piece of tape right now, but... Especially not because we haven't powered it on yet. Yes. But you can see, there's so there's two fans in the back. There's a nice heat sink grid, and this draws the heat off the M.2s and keeps them, I'm assuming, very nice and cool. Right, and you will want to use that thermal uh, paste uh, that they give you. A little Thermal pad, sir. Pad, yes, the thermal pad. That'll butt up against here, probably, and uh, help help shed the heat from the drives. But the one thing I don't see is where to access the RAM. I threw the manual on the floor already. I'm but assuming... You found more screws? Yes, the more screws you take out, uh, looks like these might end Wait, up... Wait, this is in German. It's alive, all right, cool. Oh, and another heat sink, look at this. More heat sink. At the start, we talked about how these systems have dedicated boot drives. We've revealed the, uh, the boot drive here. 42 maybe? Yeah, that looks yeah. like a 42. And then, of course, these are the uh, DDR5 uh, uh, modules or, or slots in one module. So we've got 8 gig native on board with this. Um, you can see the, the slots here for the drives, the uh, Wi-Fi chip there. And somewhere inside here is an Intel processor. Yes, it's probably on the other side, but there's more screws. And we may not want to fully dismantle it before. Oh, uh -huh. there, you, there you go. Okay, there's no <laughs> screws at all in this thing, but there are little wires with... Yeah, it's little solder points. Yes. So, oh, let's not destroy it. Okay. So so we've got the fan, a heat sink, and it's a uh, Intel i5. It's a 10-core processor, which should deliver quite Should good. we take off the CPU, maybe start shaving away some traces to see what... Uh, no, I don't think we need to go that deep, but it's a dense board, and uh, that's, pretty, uh, that's pretty neat just on its own. Yeah, it's a nice metal shell. You're trusting me to hold this? No. Well, you already handed it to me, so we're too late now. All right, so we've successfully disassembled this. We've got our four SSDs. I suggest maybe we pause a second, reassemble. Yes. Get the SSDs in, boot this bad boy, and then see what we're dealing with. Yeah. All right. Checking in on Kevin's testing. He's got the NAS rigged up here. 
just the one power button light on the front. We put a hard drive on there just for scale to give you a feel for what this thing looks like sitting on a desk, the total footprint. We've got a little Thunderbolt drive plugged in and we've connected it to our 10 gig switch, which also has this workstation over here. And Kevin's working on simulating some file transfer tests to show what it looks like passing a big bunch of data over the 10 gig fabric to the Ugreen NAS. Yeah, so we have a group of around 37 gigabytes. I'm just gonna do a drag and drop real quick on here. And right now we're seeing maybe 700 megs a second uh, on average. And when we look at the uh, Ugreen interface, um, it's showing 970. Now this is across all four drives. We're using RAID 5. So take that, divide by, uh, or multiply it by 0.75, and that's roughly what the write speed is to the, uh, the volume. And we actually drill into the volume itself. We're seeing 727 megs a second. Uh, so upper 600s, low 700s to the uh, drive, uh, to the internal uh, rig group on uh, write speed. And uh, this is gonna uh, wrap up pretty quick. So, once this guy finishes, another step that we're going to do is, uh, since this thing supports Thunderbolt uh, connectivity, we're going to push the data from the uh, NAS over to our Thunderbolt drive. And it can also go both ways. So you can also draw, draw data from your uh, Thunderbolt device into the NAS. Uh, we're just going the other direction. So we're going to go from uh, copy, peripheral, and we see our little SE920. Select that volume. And now this will go in the background. To see what it's doing, we're going to look at the task manager. And uh, from here, we see uh, read speed of around like 530 megabytes per second. And this is going off to the external drive. So here we can see the status of uh, those file transfers. And I can also move this guy as well. So uh, I'm going to copy this to the uh, same um, new volume on that uh, device. And we go up here and uh, we get an idea of how fast it's uh, transferring over. Obviously, I mean, there's a huge benefit to having onboard 10 gig for LAN connectivity or onboard Thunderbolt support uh, for movement on and off the NAS to external storage. Uh, it's pretty cool considering the footprint of this is like, what, two hard drives stacked on top of one another? Yeah, so it's uh, really showing the benefits of 10 gig native on the NAS, something that uh, most enthusiasts, media professionals have been begging for, and great to see that, especially on this tiny little portable flash NAS. So with the anecdotal sort of uh, stopwatch testing complete, let's take a look at our full benchmark suite and see just how well this drive performs in our standard set of NAS testing. So we leveraged uh, RAID 5 since there's four drives. Get some parity data in there, so if a drive fails, your drive doesn't just, uh, your data doesn't destruct. But overall, pretty basic configuration for a four bay unit. And where these these things both have offered uh, the same processor, same amount of RAM, but there are some nuances to the builds that will affect performance. One 10 gig port on this unit versus two, but you don't have as many SSDs in that one, so. Well, but hard drives are still pretty quick, and in 10 gig will, yeah. yeah, 10 gig uh, will give you about a gig a second, a little bit plus or minus, uh, and you're gonna have up to two, well, we saw up to two gigabytes a second out of uh, this unit. This model, its best case is still going to be one gig a second, just since it's one port. But Which is worth noting because the SSD backplane in here is Gen 3, right? Yeah, so we saw that uh, these drives established connection at Gen 3 over a BY2 connection. Uh, this unit um, has uh, Gen 4 slots with a BY4 connection. Now, there's there are some differences between these two units and there is probably some compromise on how a small platform is going to be leveraged and well, honest to be fair though one 10 gig port four ssds they could be early early nvme and still do pretty well yeah a gen 3 interface by two connection alone can still saturate a 10 gig connection or get close to it right when you go up to four drives i mean you're not that isn't really a problem and while you might want to see a faster connection internally it has no bearing on what you're going to be able to put in and out of the box. No, the, I mean, the benefit for this guy is obviously the size, the uh, portability is nice, it's quiet, relatively speaking, 10 gig and Thunderbolt for connectivity. For on-set use cases, this is a really popular form factor or a well, small like apartment or something where you want a home lab or data protection, data backup and some apps, but you don't have 
room for a larger system. Well, yeah, or like a, an apartment situation or home theater where this might be underneath the TV where too, yeah. hard drive units get quiet and you think of um, a NAS in terms of uh, fan noise, but a hard drive seeking, you can hear that. I mean, the, that makes... Clickety clicks? Yes. SSDs... No clickety clicks. Um, yes. The, Technical w- terms. I, I would really love if someone made an SSD that had a little noisemaker on it. A little rattle, a little baby yeah. rattle. Okay, but we did finally test this thing, and what did you see for performance? Okay, so overall, uh, when we looked at uh, the uh, performance with our FIO configuration, we had four shares set up, 25 gig uh, test files on each, so 100 gig footprint total. The uh, DX480 measured around 1.1 gigabytes a second read versus 2.2 on the um, uh, hard drive unit, but that just came down to... That's your port to port. Yeah. Straight up, okay. And then write speed, we saw 931 megabytes a second versus uh, 1.4. And that's just, we started to see the limitations of a single 10 gig port. Not necessarily a bad thing, it's just, that's just really a hardware configuration this thing offers. As we start looking at the benefits of flash over hard drive, we start seeing performance like skyrocket. You're going to see 190 IOPS on the hard drive unit for 4K random read. That went up to around 7100 IOPS on the NVMe uh, model. For 4K random write, 316 IOPS on the uh, six bay unit hard drive uh, went up to just under 8000 IOPS on um, the NVMe model. And same thing with a uh, mixed AK7030 workload, 270 uh, so IOPS average on the hard drive model and uh, around 9100 IOPS on the NVMe solution. So overall, I mean, huge performance uplift, but you would probably see that on the 6 bay as well going to uh, NVMe because there are still two slots open on the bottom. And that's something we should revisit is getting SSDs in this unit and play with that a little bit more. In fact, there was such great feedback on the YouTube video we did on the 6-bay unit that we're considering doing another video series where we take all of that feedback and just spin them up one at a time and and answer all those questions. Uh, We've got a review coming on both of these systems and when that's available, we'll link to that in the respective videos. But for now, the takeaway here is this system like this one, well-designed, you get the performance out of your 10 gig port on here. And um, yeah, it's easy to build. It's easy to get operational. It takes a few minutes to put the drives in and kind of power up and click go. But relatively impressive performance. And if Ugreen needs to do anything, it's uh, the app ecosystem that'll grow over time. Yeah. Uh, and then additional features and, uh, and protocol support, which happens over time. But from a hardware perspective, these units are really strong and really encouraging. And we look forward to seeing what Ugreen does next. So check out the full review uh, in the uh, description and the video for this guy too, if you want to learn more about the hard drive unit. Uh, until next time, thanks for tuning in.